Welcome back to my journey down the River Wye and my retracing of the boat trips that would spark the beginning of British tourism as we know it over 250 years ago. If you didn't catch the previous video, I started the adventure in the picturesque town of Ross on Wye and I followed the river down to the village of Simmons Yat East where I found a magnificent viewpoint and the English-Welsh border. Well, I've crossed the border into Wales and I am now in Monmouth, which was roughly the halfway point of the tour and a place where most of the tourists did exactly what I did and that is find some accommodation and stay the night. So last night when I arrived I took a quick walk around and although it was very quiet, the buildings on the main square were lit up beautifully. I stayed at the King's Head which is a Weatherspoons pub and hotel and we'll be checking out of it before the end of the video so I'll give you a quick room tour and tell you how much it cost me to stay there for the night. But before that room tour we are going to take a quick tour of Monmouth. So let's go and take a walk across that bridge and see what we can find. Behind me here is the Munno Bridge. This is a bridge that is quite unique here in Britain because it is the only surviving medieval bridge with a fortified gate on its span. Originally there was a timber bridge here but it was replaced by this version in the late 1200s originally to keep away Welsh raiders and to keep them out of the town of Monmouth. Soldiers would occupy the bridge and keep guard in case anybody tried their luck and tried to get across. More recently, and I mean in the last few hundred years, the bridge was adapted into more of a toll bridge. City officials would wait here for traders and farmers who were bringing their goods and livestock to the market that's behind the camera and they would charge them for bringing them into the town. It's called the Munno Bridge because it crosses the Munno River and just a little further up behind where I am here it flows into the River Wye. It connects Munno Bridge at one end to Agincourt Square at the other and that is where I'm heading to next. So this is Agincourt Square and this is the place in the old days lined with hotels where the tourists from the boat trips used to spend the night. It would be a ferocious scene here in the evening. People at bars and taverns drinking and eating, having a great time. My hotel is just over there behind me so I'll show you that in a second. These days in the centre of the square is a monument to Charles Rolls who was the co-founder of the Rolls-Royce company and there is also an effigy of King Henry V who was born at Monmouth Castle. Just standing here, even though it's quiet now, you can picture the scene of what it would have been like a couple of hundred years ago when all those tourists were in town. I am almost certain that it would have been a perfect place to hang out on those boat trips. And from the square, if you follow a little shopping passage down about 50 metres, you'll come to St Mary's Priory Church. This church was founded in 1075, but it's been restored and repaired quite a few times over the years. And this version dates back to the 18th and 19th centuries. It turns out that the church is the tallest building in the town, standing at 62 metres or 205 feet above the ground. The cockerel on top was hit by a lightning strike, would you believe, in 2007 and it was replaced up there in 2010 following repairs to the spire.
we have ourselves a town map. So I thought I would just show you, there is the river Mono coming round here, there is the bridge, and then down here, it spills into the River Wye, and the River Wye comes from up here, and you can see almost turning Monmouth into an island. There we go, so I am on Agincourt Square, there it is, and then just behind me is the hotel I stayed at, the King's Head, a Weatherspoons hotel. So let me take you inside, we'll get some breakfast, and I'll show you around. Okay, we have two hash browns, two bacon, two toast, beans, eggs, sausage, some brown sauce, an incredible view out the window of the square. I am gonna take care of business, and then I'll show you the room. Right, quick room tour. We have a little bit of hanging space there, a television. There is the main bed, very comfortable. A desk with coffee and a fan. And the bathroom, or a shower room I should say. 60 pounds a night, did the trick. Right, let's get back to the car park, pick up the car and get on the road. now on the outskirts of town and just before I get on the road there is a stop that the boat tours used to make nearby that I made last night on my way here. It's a place called the Kimin or the Kaimin, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it but it's a name of a hill to the east of Monmouth where tourists from the river boats would head up for a picnic. I definitely recommend a visit although the roads leading up to it are single track so be warned. Last night I ended up walking the last part because the automated gate had a sign on it that said it would close at dusk and it was dusk and I didn't want to get trapped inside so I parked my car a little further down the hill and walked the rest of the way. At the top is a naval temple which was originally constructed in 1800 but has been restored many times since and a small two-story circular Georgian banqueting house that was financed and built by the Monmouth Picnic Club in 1794. I've got to tell you the views up there were spectacular and uh, back in those days, of course, they used to build summer houses on those viewpoints so people could head up there and enjoy the views and have a picnic at the same time. If you enjoy walking as I do, then the area southeast of Monmouth is going to be for you. There's lots of walking trails along the river itself, and in this area that I'm currently in right now, which is probably about a mile, mile and a half outside of the town, there are two really interesting bridges from the past. The first one is Monmouth Viaduct, which was a 20 arch, 183 meter sandstone bridge and it carried the Colford Monmouth Usk Pontypool railway line across the river. It was inaugurated in 1861 but unfortunately closed down in 1964 when a more economical replacement line was built nearby. As you can see these days only the stone elements of the viaduct remain. The part that crossed the river, which was the iron and steel girders, were removed and used elsewhere. And then on the other side of me is the Duke of Beaufort Bridge, which was opened in 1873. And this one consists of three spans of steel lattice girders, which are still there to this day and still open for pedestrians to cross. So I think what I'm gonna do is just walk a little further along, head up the bank, and walk across. And I thought whilst I'm walking over, I would tell you about the boats that were used on the tours. They weren't like boats that you see today. They were built specifically for the tourism industry. They were generally built from the lightest wood they could find. 
and equipped with a sail and then the boat could be moved along the water either by using the sail if the wind conditions were right or the crew could row them along the water with paddles if not. Most of them had canopies in case of bad weather and they pretty much all had padded seats and little tables set up so that people could write and draw and paint as the boat was moving along. Well it truly is a magnificent place to be. On my left now I can see some rapids as I peer through the iron girders of the bridge and then over there is the Monmouth aqueduct that I was talking about just a couple of moments ago. The villages that we are heading to next are thought of as quite industrial places historically and I'll tell you why when we get there. This is the little village of Clandogo and once again I am walking alongside the River Wye. This was quite an industrial area back when the boat tours were popular. Villages like this one, Redbrook, Brockweir, that's where a lot of the boats were built and according to what the tourists wrote in their journals and diaries they actually quite liked the industrial landscape. One person writing that the iron and tin works of Redbrook gave animation to the romantic scenery. It's also an area where the larger boats from the sea would come up to and then exchange their cargo into smaller boats to go further on up the Y. It's incredible to believe, but before 1828, there was no road that connected Monmouth to Chepstow. So all of the goods really had to travel up the river Y. In any event, I am going to call it a day here in this beautiful scenery. You can see the green fields and meadows behind me and the river. I am going to continue my journey in the next video, the third and final part of my Y Valley Riverboat series. Thanks for joining me so far. Consider subscribing and consider joining me in the next video. There is going to be lots more to discover, I am sure.